and peace be multiplied to you all in Jesus name amen 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 and amen yeah 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 so when Hebrews chapter get your Bibles when Hebrews chapter 7 this morning I believe Hebrews chapter 7 Chapters 1 and chapter 2, he retires the angels. Chapter 3, he retires Moses. Chapter 4, he retires um, Joshua. Chapter 5, he is the high priest. Yeah. Chapter 6. We read that yesterday, chapter 7, is where we're dealing with Hebrews chapter 7, verse 1 to 28. Hebrews 7, 1 to 28. This morning, if you're in the city of Abuja, I am in the city of Abuja this morning, and I'm preaching for my friend, the bishop-elect of Calvary Life and the lead pastor of the Standpoint Church. Dr. Phil Ransom Bello this evening. I'm with Bishop Phil Ransom Bello this evening. So if you're in Abuja, I'd like to see you this evening. Let's do this at um, TSP. We're going to have a great time by the grace of God. Amen. You're in Abuja. So TSP, T if you're in Abuja, TSP. I just came into Abuja this morning from London. And I'm in Lagos tomorrow for swag, saved with amazing, amazing grace, Teens Church. Then Sunday morning, three services. Will you pray for me? Please pray for me. Okay, let's make our declaration this morning. Let's make our declaration this morning. Important to make our declaration this morning. Um, one, two, three, go. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am the redeemed of the Lord. I'm the beloved of Abba. All my sins are forgiven. I am passionately loved by God. I am powerfully helped by God. I am kept and protected by God. I enjoy angelic assistance. I am irrevocably blessed. I am eternally forgiven. I am the healed of the Lord. I enjoy divine health. I have the favor and the wisdom of God. I am fruitful. I flourish, excel, and prosper in all that I do. I have the multiplier's anointing. Nothing is against me. Nothing dies in my hands. I am never stranded. The supernatural is natural to me. All things are working together for my good. God loves me more than the devil hates me. And grace is working for me. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen and amen. Announcements again. I'm in Abuja today. Um, I'm in Abuja already. This evening I'm preaching for Dr. Firan Zabelo. Um, this evening is going to be an exciting time in Abuja by God's grace. And then tomorrow, first flight, I'm out of Abuja to the Teens Church swag. Saved with amazing grace. Tomorrow um, we're going to have a great time. And then... Uh, Sunday service, three services, resurrection morning. God is up to something, and you know it has started already. God is good. Glory to God. So let's go to Hebrews chapter 7 from verse 1. Let's do this. Father, bless your word in Jesus' name. Give us understanding. The eyes of our understanding is enlightened to see Christ as we read the scripture. As he's revealed, we are unveiled in Jesus' matchless name. Amen. Glory to God. For this Melchizedek king of salem this melchizedek 
king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, is showing us who Melchizedek is. This Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham, who met Abraham. The details are important. Who met Abraham? Abraham did not meet Melchizedek. Melchizedek met Abraham. This was the importance of this detail. It doesn't matter who met who first. It matters. It shows you the nature of God. That we did not meet him. He came and met us. Doesn't matter who met first. So long as there is a meeting. No. The detail is important for the gospel. It was Jesus sitting on, the, on top of the well waiting for the woman by the well to come meet him by the well. It was not the woman waiting on Jesus. It was Jesus waiting on the woman. The detail is important. It's God who came to man. Man couldn't come to God. Are you with me? Is God who came to man, man couldn't come to God. So it was not the woman by the well waiting for Jesus to come. They would have been preaching, wait on the Lord, wait on the Lord. No, 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 no. It was God who sat on the well waiting for the woman to come. It is the consistency with the scripture that I'm dealing with. Who met Abraham returning from the slaughter? It was not Abraham who met him. It was Melchizedek who met Abraham returning from the slaughter. Are you seeing what I'm saying that? So the detail is very important. It was Jesus who was on the well waiting for the woman to come. That's why we say you can't boast that you met Jesus. It was Jesus who met you. So until I found the Lord, no. How did you find the Lord? Jesus is the compass for man to compass, see God. Hey, God. Jesus is the compass for man to come and pass to see God. So without the compass, you cannot pass. You will pass away. You, the compass to see God, to meet God. Jesus is the compass for man to come and pass to see God. So Jesus is the one who was waiting for us. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was not the woman waiting for Jesus. It was Jesus waiting. So that's why I had to bring that out. Lest you think it's just one of those. No, no. It's important that you, um, you get that. Two, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all first being translated. Tenth part of all. Let me explain that. It was cultural response. It was not the Holy Ghost who told Abraham, thou shalt pay your tenth. And if you go back to Genesis where this is read, it was not because Abraham paid tithe that he got blessed. No. Rather, it was because he was blessed by this king of Salem called Melchizedek. He, in response to the blessing, acted culturally. No, Abraham was not a Christian. He came from idolatry. So he was responding culturally to say, ah, you have blessed me. I have come from battle. Take. So it is a cultural thing to give when you are blessed. It's also a spiritual thing to respond when you are blessed. Now, if you are not giving, it means culturally you don't have sins. Spiritually you don't have sins. It's a cultural thing to respond when you, when you, as a blessed person. It's also a spiritual thing. So I'm saying to you, if you are not giving culturally you don't have sense spiritually too you don't have sense no no and it's, it's two zero <laughs> it's two zero it's not good so what do you have is common sense very important reverend cherish just added that one is common sense is cultural sense is spiritual response is common sense, is cultural sense, is spiritual response. 
it's like an older person comes to visit say i'm going to visit the dna then it's just come she knows what to do in the same way you have fellowship with god it's just common sense to know how to respond and to know what to do now you don't have common sense you don't have cultural sense i'm saying if you're a believer and you're not giving it means you don't have common sense tick you don't have cultural sense two zero you don't have spiritual sense three zero is bible sense four zero is the believer sense five zero you don't have common sense you don't have cultural sense you don't have spiritual sense you don't have bible sense you don't have the believer sense what sense do you have see what i'm saying now what we also teach at the logic church is that tithing is mathematical and mechanical what we do is sit yourself down what and, and tithing has also helped people because it makes them disciplined enough to give regularly but i'm just saying don't give out of fear don't give out of mathematics be led by the spirit and as the prompting comes to you you just give and if you don't have all these sins it means you are working in nonsense so let's discuss this melchizedek first being trusted translated king of sale and king of righteousness pastor just join what is the topic please is hebrews chapter 7 we're reading from verse 1 to the end sir thank you i mean verse 2 to whom also abraham gave a ten part of all for being translated king of righteousness save it king of salem which means king of peace he is the king of righteousness is the king of salem which means king of peace now there's a lot of um blah blah blue about who Melchizedek is verse 3 says without father without mother without genealogy having neither beginning of days nor end of life having neither beginning of days nor end of life so there are people who says Melchizedek was just a regular guy that a lot of people had this complication of birth a lot of people then did not know when they were born and did not know um there was no record of when they died so he was just a human being who just um was a type and shadow of christ yeah but there's something there that really makes him more type and shadow of Christ is the last phrase in verse th three remains a priest continually forever. So his priesthood is forever. So what I tell people is that it doesn't matter who Melchizedek was. We know who Jesus is. So let's stay there. But the too many things in that verse three that makes me feel most times that this was the pre-incarnate Christ. And a lot of even Christologic, Christ, Christocentric theologians may not be, agree with me, but it's not a matter for debate. It's not what we should tear shit for. You can say Melchizedek was a regular human being, and you will not be wrong. But I'm just saying where it really hits me the most is he remains a priest continually. And when the Bible says, before Abraham was, I I am. And Abraham rejoiced to see my day. So what time did Abraham meet this divine being? This is one of the things I can tie to when he met Melchizedek, which I strongly believe he is a pre-incarnate Christ, a type and shadow of Christ, Melchizedek. Yeah, because he remains a priest continually. Let me see verse 3 in TPT. Verse 3 in TPT. Verse 3 in TPT. Just give me a minute. Sorry, guys. I hope this is not boring for you today. This Melchizedek has no father or mother, no record of any of his ancestors, no cousin. He was never born and he never died. 
That thing is suggesting eternity. I'm just looking at TPT. He was never born and he never died. But his life is like a picture. His life is like a picture made to resemble the Son of God, a king priest forever. He was never born and he never died. Thank you very much, Oris. Is the theophanic or theophoric manifestation of the imprecarnate Christ. There's no way you can, you can shift me out of this belief. I'm just saying if you believe it was a human being, no problem. You never used to go police station. That's not what we should hear the Bible about. I mean, it does not affect the the core values of Christocentric and the gospel. But I'm just saying, I can shake it off from TPT, which is closest to the Aramaic translation. I can shake it off. I can shake it off. Let me read it in message translation. Verse 3, message translation. Melchizedek means king, king of righteousness. Salem means peace. So he is also king of peace. Melchizedek tore us out of the past without record of family ties, no account of beginning or end. In this way, he's like the son of God, one huge priest presence dominating the landscape always. Can you, how do you work that though? So I don't know how you can, let me try NLT. I don't know how you can shift Jesus out of the pre-incarnate Christ, the theophoric or theophanic, like my, my kid brother, okay, just mentioned. And he's right. And there's no record of his father or mother or any of his ancestors, no beginning or end to his life. He remains a priest forever, resembling the Son of God. I can't shake it off. So that you people will just believe that he was a regular human being, but God selected him to typify Christ. I'm saying to you, if you believe that, that you are not wrong, it's okay. It's not something that we shift the foundation of our Christian faith, like the core values. But I'm saying, brah, TPT said something here that I cannot shake off. He was never born and he never died. But his life is like a picture of the Son of God and a king priest forever. It's too... So don't blame me if I it's too close for comfort. <laughs> yeah, come on, it's too close. He, he was never born, he never died. It's too I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I don't share that view with you. The dots are connected. It is too oh loud gone. How do they say it again? It's it's is it is giving Christ in the Gen Z way. It is giving Christ, 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 and more Christ. I'm sorry. Well, let's move. I just wanted us to... It's still a big theologic, theological debate. And I'm, I always say to my friends who are on the other side of the theology that, you know, that's not something that affects all your sins are forgiven. It doesn't affect uh, the core values of the Christian faith that we believe in, the message of God's grace. It doesn't distort the message of God's grace The but this thing is, it is too heavy. It is, what is Paul? What's the meaning of Paul? P-O-R-R-O. -R -R yeah. You know, so it is, it is, it is, it's plenty. It's, it's a lot for me to just shake and say that Abraham rejoiced to see my day. I'm like, what day did Abraham see Jesus? Why is he now the king of peace? The king of righteousness. Why did he become king of righteousness? And also the king of Salem, king of peace. Now let's move. So I think this is Jesus is the real read Jesus is the real deal. Now consider how great this man was, to whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of his spoils. And indeed, those who are of the sons of Levi who receive the priesthood have a commandment to receive tithes from the people according to the law, according to the law, according to the law. Don't come at me with this scripture. 
and says in the New Testament, hey, did you read properly? According to the law, that is from their brethren, though they have come from the loins of Abraham. Six, but he whose genealogy is not derived from them received tithes from Abraham and blessed him who had the promise. Watch this. But he whose genealogy is not derived from the from them received tithe from Abraham and blessed him who had the promise. It says people paid tithe and it's a law, it's something about the law. But this guy, Abraham, paid tithe to somebody who was not even in the that. So giving precedes the law. Giving precedes the law. So don't give out of law, give out of hilarious generosity. So the gospel reconciled giving with the original intent. It precedes the law. Yeah. Now behold. Now sorry. Now beyond all contradiction. The lesser is blessed. By the better. The lesser is blessed. By the better. Now beyond all contradiction. The lesser is blessed. By the better. The lesser is blessed by the better. Let me teach you something. I mean, the thought was growing up. When you find somebody who's of um, important spiritual authority to you, position to you, who's, I mean, graciously blessing you, take a position to always receive. Don't, don't not position yourself to be blessed by them. Well, it, here mortal, mortal men receive tithe, but there he receives them of whom it is witness that he leaves even levi who receives tithe paid tithe through abraham so to speak for he was still in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him now god doesn't receive money i hope you know that when you give you're giving to the kingdom but what god receives is your faith your generosity your heart your service there's if you understand lfc if you've been through lfc logic foundation class you understand the five crowns if you have not been through LFC, don't dull. Join the next LFC. You understand the five crowns, yeah? So there's a reward for giving. There's a reward for giving. There's a reward for giving. So um, God is not the money. It's the sacrifice. It is the faith. So when you are dropping it, it's an expression of faith. Now, listen to me. I've said this to you before, and let me say this again. Grace makes all things available. Faith makes all things what? Grace makes all things available. Faith makes all things obtainable. Now, giving is an expression of faith. So when you give, is you saying, I am ready to lambano everything grace has done for me. So giving is not what creates it. Giving is what takes it. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Giving is what takes it. So I'm saying giving is an expression of your faith. And when you give, you are lambanoing, you are taking what grace has already provided as an expression of it. So giving cannot be done religiously because it, it, it messes up the whole idea of giving. It cannot be done religiously, neither, neither can it be done uh, um, whatever. No, it messes up the idea. So giving is, is an act of Lambano. Register for LFC. The link is in the church bio. Register for LFC. 8th of April. I'm teaching the class. Give cheerfully. We be better understanding. Glory to God. 11. Therefore, if perfection were through the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise according to the order of Melchizedek and not be called according to the order of Aaron? For the priesthood being changed, you know, you put all this DJ, they will not see this part too. For the priesthood being changed of necessity, there's also a change of the law. For he of whom these things are spoken belong to another tribe from which no man has officiated at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord arose from Judah. 
of which tribe Moses spoke nothing concerning priesthood. And it is yet far more evident if in the likeness of Melchizedek there arise another priesthood. Watch this. Who has come not according to the law of a fleshly commandment, but according to the power of an endless life. Talking about Jesus. He didn't come after the law of the fleshly commandment. He came according to the power of an endless life. That is why it is said, watch this, you are a priest forever according to the, the establishment or the order of Melchizedek. You see what I'm saying? Sorry, guys. I'm st struggling to see it properly. I just found something to do morning calling. I got in here like 20 minutes ago. So Sorry that I'm moving. 18, for on the one hand, there is an annulling of the formal commandment because of its weakness and unprofitableness. Why you people? What is wrong with you people? Yeah, we have to uphold the law. You don't discard the old commandment. Are you seeing what he's saying? Are you seeing what he's saying? He's saying, for one hand, there is an annulling of the former commandment because of his weaknesses and unprofitableness. So something that is weak and it's not profitable. Are you understanding what I mean? It is weak and it is not profitable. Why, why do you want me to stay there? Something that the Bible describes clearly as weak. Weak is not even an unprofitableness. You see, for the law was made not for the law for the law made nothing perfect. On the other hand, there is the bringing of a better hope through which we draw near to God. In as much and in as much as we he was not made priest without an oath, for they have become priests without an oath, but he with an oath by him who said to him, The Lord has sworn. And will not relent. You are a priest forever. Chapter 7. He retires the law. He retires the law. You are a priest forever. According to the order of what? Melchizedek. Again. So how can you be? Jesus priesthood is tied to this Uncle Mel. Uncle Mel. And Jesus priesthood are like. Five and six. So Jesus' priesthood is tied to this Uncle Mel's um, um, priesthood. It's, I mean, it's there. So let's see 22. And so much more Jesus has become a shorty of a better covenant. Why do you want to stay with the old covenant? Jesus has become a shorty of what? A better covenant. A better covenant. Why do you like the old covenant so much? Like, what's wrong with you? What are you doing with the old covenant? Yeah. What are you doing with the old covenant? Why do you like the... Okay, this is better. Why do you like the old covenant so much? What are you doing with the, with the old covenant? So much more. Jesus becomes a shorty of a better covenant. So, chapter 7, he retires the old covenant. He totally retires the old covenant. 23. And there were many priests because they were prevented by death from continuing. Oh, God. I hope you get this. Watch this. So in those days, you had every church, every religious house, how their high priest who goes in for them every now. But when the high priest dies, it is finished. There's nobody to represent God. Represent the people before God. Remember, I've taught you this. The prophet represents God to the people. The high priest represents the people to God. So when the high priest dies, they are in trouble. Because the high priest must die. He, he, he must die now. Do you know that he must die? Like if you now make me your high priest, there's a problem. Because 90 plus, as I have discussed with God, I'll be out of here then. You're in trouble. Maybe 100. 
you are in trouble. But this high priest, after the order of Melchizedek, has an endless life. You see, has what an endless. Let me show you something. Twenty four. But he, because of because he continues forever, has an unchangeable priesthood. Has an unchangeable priesthood. Has an unchangeable priesthood. Therefore, he is also able to save Oda Bele Kaparasis. He is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him since he always lives to make intercession. Do you understand the power of an endless priesthood? Do you know the power of an endless priesthood? That, now, for you to say the believer won't make it to heaven, will miss heaven, is you are saying the priesthood of Jesus has problem, is faulty. Because you, I know in verse 25. Therefore, he's able to save us to the uttermost because of his endless priesthood. Let me read 25 in AMPC. So that you understand what I'm saying. 25 in him. So to see a believer will lose salvation, it's like you are saying the priesthood of Jesus was sorry. There was network problem in the priesthood of Jesus. Are you playing? That's what you are inferring. You are saying the priesthood of Jesus had network failure at some point. Therefore, reading it in AMPC, therefore he's able also to save to the uttermost completely perfectly finally and for all time and eternity so your high priest who represents you does not die so your forgiveness of sins does not die your insurance cannot die those who come to god through him since he is always living to make petition to god and intercede with him and intervene for them. That should be our memory verse today. Verse 25. When Jude says unto him that is able to keep you from falling, he's talking about the high priest of Jesus. Therefore, it's also he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. Our insurance does not expire. That's what he's saying here. That the insurance of the believer cannot expire. It's an eternal life insurance policy. Are you understanding what I'm saying? It's an eternal life insurance policy. That means your life is too short to exhaust the eternality of Christ. Glory to God. 26. For such a high priest was fitting for us. Uh -uh. I wouldn't tell you, I will not be fitting for us. Was fitting for us who is holy, harmless, undefined, separate from sinners, and has become higher than the heavens. Yeah. Who does not need daily, who does not need daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifices first for his own sins and then for the people? Because that's what he used to do in the Old Testament. For this he did once for all when he offered up himself. This is one scripture you need to note. The blood of Jesus was shed once for all men, once for all time, and once for all sins. Once for all men, once for all time, and once for all sins. So the Bible says, it says, for this he did once for all men when he offered up himself. Once for all men, once for all men when he offered up himself. Once for all men when he offered up himself. For the law appoints a high priest, men who have weaknesses, but the word of of the oath which came after the law appoints the son who has been perfected forever 
But the word of the oath, which came after the law, appoints the son who has been perfected forever. The son who has been perfected forever. So your high priest is able to save to the uttermost. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. Glory to God. Glory to God. Don't miss this evening. Um, if you're in Abuja, the Standpoint Church, I'm going to be there preaching um, something really powerful. Tomorrow, I'm going to be at Swag Teens Church, um, headquarters, Lekki, Lagos, saved with amazing grace. And then on Sunday morning, three services, God punished the devil. Father, thank you for your people. We pray mighty grace upon your people. In the name of Jesus, that the work of the high priest will bring a life that is guilt-free, that gives them access to come lambano and receive everything that grace has already done, that guilt is out of the way, shame is out of the way, reproach out of the way, that the work of this high priest will be thoroughly seated in their heart and in their mind, knowing that before Abba, we have one who represents us completely, who knows us intimately and loves us regardless we thank you our father because it is done in jesus matchless name amen 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 will you pray for me don't just say yes we will spend a minute or two pray for me um this evening i'm preaching tomorrow preaching sunday morning three services i can't even wait to share god's word with you and see you all on sunday i'm back to your country nigeria our great country I'll see you all on Sunday. I love you. Blessings, blessings.